Uh, what is in the way? Oh, it's actually not. It's not. Is no, it? no, no, everything is not? good. Okay. Is good I can drop my camera a little bit more. Yeah. And I'm going to have to move my webcam every time I'm on the stream. So, yeah, welcome. Hello and welcome. Hi. Um, welcome to the stream. Uh, well, the Friday edition of the Bean Streaming, right? Yes, I think is it's that the, one today. Is this the is this the better edition or the Monday edition? You would never. Know. Um, <laughs> I would say the Monday one because by Monday my brain at least has rested a little bit, and uh, I'm like, "Ooh, let's go play this week." Where on Fridays I'm like, "Hey, it's it's I'm a little still happy, but uh, yeah. it's been a long week." I think this is stream number five for me. I think. I think so. It's one of those I I, I can't keep track anymore. It's. Um, there are too many things going on. Stream number six for me, and one Ooh. more. To go, one more to go. Actually, actually, after this one, I have one more, and uh, oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> it's 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 been a week. Seven stream this week, so mm. it's okay. Um, I get I get a really yeah. nice tan from my lights hitting me. Like mm. that, so maybe <laughs> I can actually adjust my tan. Let's see quickly. Yeah, on a bit more tan. There we go. See, good now morning. I'm slightly more tanned. Good morning, Ahmed. Hi, hello, and good morning. Yeah, yeah. um, it is a good morning. Well. It's second coffee morning, so third coffee morning, fourth coffee is also ready. Wow. Okay. So we are good to go. Actually, <laughs> well, it's either third and fourth or fourth and fifth. I lost okay. track. No, yeah. This is this is uh, this is my second one. Um, let me just uh, pop this off. Uh, actually, yeah. no, Let me put this off. Yeah. We continue to build our application mm. with CDK. It's um, um, so for those of you who are joining us for the first time. Um, We've been basically over the past few weeks building an application with CDK. So we're building entire mm -hmm. scaffolding. It's a container-based application. And um, we've been doing it kind of haphazardly, just kind of plumping things here and there um, in a single file. And um, um, it works. It's a sample application that works, but we want to expand on it. We want to make it in mm -hmm. you know maybe multiple accounts, doing uh, proper things with DNS, all the things. So it's a long-running series. If you're not here from the start, don't worry. If you're interested in AWS and infrastructure as code and hosting things on AWS in general, we talk about all that, all that all mm. the time. So um, feel free to post us any questions here as well. Um, um, we are very happy to answer mm. them. So just quickly, uh, let uh, me just jump in here. If you want to follow us, you can see over there is the yes. link to the recordings that are on YouTube. So you are welcome to go watch the past episodes. We are also in the process of actually labeling them and actually giving them proper titles and descriptions so you can actually know what is in there other than, you know, being streaming in a date, which we found yeah. is not very useful. Um, and uh, part of what uh, Darko was talking about is that uh, this series is focused on doing production ready infrastructure. Yeah. And that production ready is now the portion we're going to start focusing on today because uh, we ran into a fun situation with our DNS. Um, tell us more, Darko. Yeah, so last time uh, we had it. Uh, so Actually, let me let me just plop this on the screen now. Um, so last time we we kind of built um, we used my account for everything. At one point, we want to migrate to a second account. Uh, we promised we were going to do this today, but we lied. Apparently, we didn't move to a central account today. So, uh, but but still, we we have some things we can fix. Um, the problem here was well, the problem we had was that uh, we were having everything in a single account. So we would create our DNS mm -hmm. zones and everything else and all the, you know, uh, like create a host zone, create, create records, create all the stuff, um, which is a problem because I went and I did CDK delete or CDK destroy. What happens? It removed my DNS hosted zone, my route 53 hosted zone. And the problem there was that the hosted zone was actually um, being the main name server for a record registered under this gentleman's name in his AWS mm -hmm. account. So what happens then? You delete the hosted zone, bam, the name servers are gone. If you, if I want to create a new hosted zone, I have to go call up Kobus and say, Kobus, can you please use the new name servers now? So yeah, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, and it's I went that. no. And yeah, that's why no. So today we're going to try to at least start to refactor this a bit, mm. at least split out the DNS portion or the, Let's say the things we do not want to remove as often um, um, in a separate stack. So uh, let's see how this works. We are going to be reducing our blast radius, I believe, is the official Reducing term the blast it. radius, that's the official term here, yeah. <clears throat> and hello and good morning to everybody in chat. I see hello and Ricardo mm. is here and parable main equals master. Oh. Yes, it's yeah, I've changed the master branch to the main branch. Um, so mm. yeah. 
so, and Ricardo, uh, by the way, 9094459 is a colleague of ours. That's Ricardo. And um, he's been um, he's been playing around with CDK for the first time re recently. So he told me he's going to join our stream so he can ask us questions. So, Ricardo, mm. ask away. Yeah. Um, Okay, so let's let's kind of let's kind of continue on this one. So let me actually hmm. show you what we have here. Um, we have this um, big old file that does everything, right? And this big old file actually, um, you know, create as you can see, we have like thirteen lines of imports. So it creates things like um, um, what does it do? It creates a hosted zone here, right? Like a RAL fifty three hosted zone. That's a big thing that it does. It creates all the other infrastructure such as VPC. It creates a pipeline. It creates a ECS cluster. Uh, it creates task definition services for for container based applications. Um, it does what what else does it? Do? Oh, it does uh, HTTPS uh, certificates, load balancers. Uh, it does. It actually validates those certificates for you and all those things. So there's a bunch of things being created, and on top of that, it creates. Uh, it creates uh, what is it called? Uh, CloudFront yeah, redirects. Well for redirects. Oh, CloudFront. Yes. Yeah. Um, Parable, uh, are you asking about uh, this? Uh, it's Ranger. So Ranger is a text-based or terminal-based file manager. It's the mm. best thing out there. Um, <laughs> I'm a fan of terminal-based applications. So uh, um, yeah, you'll strong opinions. Yeah, strong opinions there. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, what we need to do today, at least one thing we need to do um because right now when we when we deploy our application we use cdk deploy and um so if i do uh, like that if i do cdk deploy it will deploy everything including a hosted zone including all the vpcs all the all the bells and whistles we have here it will be deployed through a single cloud formation stack which is fine but we can do better right so there's a better way to do it so uh, we're actually going to split off the DNS part in its own separate stack, right? So uh, I want to take the Route 53 hosted zone creation, so not all DNS, right? So just the Route 53 hosted zone creation, mm -hmm. which is something we want to keep, right? Um, I want to move it to a de separate stack. It's going to be still in the same application, so it's going to be still in the same repository, everything here, but it's going to be in the in the in a different stack. Let's call it that way. So there are some mm. limitations to this ones, uh, but for DNS this should not be a problem. So, and I'll get to the limitations as we as we kind of uh, dive into in, into into mm. what we're doing. So and then, uh, while he's creating that, or as soon as he's created that hosted zone, I'll be jumping in the background to quickly update the uh, registrar because, like we said, the um, DNS is currently in an account that I own and I'm managing, yeah. um, and I haven't given Docker access yet. A little bit of a trust issue there. Mm, I don't know. Is that be it? I think. Um, but um, uh, just joking. It's actually it's just in a, an account that I'd use for all my um, registrars, and it's one of those I, I just have to move it to another account shared because moving things is hard. And then I'll just update the registrar records to point to these new DNS servers. So we'll be using that. Um, we have our first question, which is uh, it around is. multiple stacks. Oh uh, yes. Mm. So I would I would say it is recommended. There are some caveats mm -hmm. when it comes to CDK and having multiple stacks in a single CDK application. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll explain those things, but absolutely. Um, it will make your life quite easier because, you know, hey, you, you have a big old, uh, you know, a chunky file here with, uh, you know, 182 lines. Which a is monolith. Like, yeah, it's a monolith, basically. All the things are hit here, you know, kind of re require each other. There's a lot of dependencies between them. It's all fine. It all works. But if I do CDK deploy, it deploys everything. If I do CDK destroy, it destroys everything, which you wouldn't like to destroy, like, CloudFront resources. Destroying CloudFront mm -hmm. resources takes 15 minutes, right? So, uh, you mm -hmm. know, you, you may want to do those things. Let's say you want to re rebuild your entire um, ECS cluster. And if you destroy everything, you destroy everything. <laughs> you don't want that. So um, we can do uh, this here. Yep. We, we, sorry, we can borrow from Battle Royale and say we don't want to have sad people. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So how are we going to do this? Um, actually, to create a second stack, it's very simple. So we need to create another file in this directory, in the lib directory. So we need to create another file, another stack, basically. Uh, that we're going to be using here. So I'm actually going to cheat a bit, and I'm going to go here and lib and this one. And um, how do we wear face masks? 
we have an extra little um, jungle vines underneath it. So <laughs> I actually have, yeah, <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> I actually bought a massive face mask that actually covers my entire beard. So when I when I put it on, it kind of uh, covers my entire face. So, but yeah, I, I started with a small mask and mind you, I have a big head. Uh, so <laughs> small mask would for, for know. Flip, my, flip my ears forward. <laughs> Second length would be just too small, so yeah, mm. yeah. You need it. You need it. You need the big mask for a big head. So well, so uh, amusing is they made me wear a, a little mask on my head for, uh, when I went in for my uh, daughter's birth. Um, really? Yeah. Which is, I went like, are you sure? <laughs> wow. But they don't give me two of the face masks, like face mask and then also beard mask. Okay. 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 Well, yeah. Well. <laughs> Cool. Uh, right. So yeah. I'm actually going to copy this entire file. Right? So I'm going to go here and uh, just basically copy the entire the entire contents of this file and create a new one. So I'm going to edit a file in lib and I'm call, calling it, I'm calling it dns-stack.ts, right? And I'm just going to paste everything, but I'm not going to need everything. So I'm going to delete most of it. So for this thing, we only need route 53 and that's it, not even the targets and patterns. Um, I'm going to keep most, well, for the time being, I'm going to keep most of the code. I'm going to do this. I don't need this. Uh, and then I don't need any of this. So, Cut like so. Base, go on. Well, go. Bam. Uh, I need to make some changes. So to make a new stack, you actually need to define um, a different well, expert class here. So it's, I'm not going to do beanstream CDK stack. I'm going to actually do DNS stack. Like that. So I'm creating a mm. new stack here called DNS stack. Um, this is a fun question. I would like to know the answer. So uh, this is okay. The, let me let me actually try to re, uh, to ask a bit more about this. When you say um, multiple stacks, you mean like multiple cloud formation stacks. Um, the imports here are problematic. Now this is something I ran into an issue, as an issue on CDK. Uh, well, it's a it's actually a limitation of 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 of, of CloudFormation, because if you create multiple stacks, you cannot directly reference things from them in an easy way, right? So you cannot import a stack to another stack, right? There are separate entities in the CloudFormation's eyes, right? So um, you can create multiple um, constructs like this. I can create, um, this is a stack, right? But I can create a construct, right? I can create a complete construct here and I can import this construct somewhere else and use the resources from that. Now. If I create a second con construct, it doesn't create a second stack. So um, it's very important to differentiate things. If you have multiple files like this, it's not necessarily that, we have, that you will have multiple stacks, right? So you can have multiple constructs that you can kind of import into one one file and create a single stack from the mm. from multiple constructs, right? But what I'm doing right now here, instead of doing imports and all those things, I'm actually creating a separate stack. So, and, and I'll explain how does this look like in a, in a second. So this 15 lines of code will actually just create a hosted zone called uh, bearded bald beans. And that's something, it's going to be a completely separate stack in the eyes of CloudFormation and CDK. So I save this, open up, uh, actually open up a file which is our bin file, right? Is that it? What did I, why does one, don't you, why won't you open? Okay, bin, and this is the main entry file. Oh. Bin, ts, this one. <coughs> yes. Basically, this is where we define our stacks, right? So if you can see here, when you say stack, it's line seven. This is where you actually create your stack. And this will create a single stack. So if I run CDK deploy, it will go into this binary file and say, hey, how many stacks you have defined? Oh, there's one and it's called main. That's fine. And it's going to deploy this one, right? That's it. Mm. Now, to add a second stack, I can. I need to import, of course, I need to import a stack. Oh, I'll basically okay, copy okay. paste this oh. thing and do DNS stack because I've created a DNS stack thing, right? And from, it's going to be DNS stack. Basically, it's going to look for that file. Now, what I can do here, uh, I can actually copy this entire thing here, like so, paste it here and call it um, DNS stack. Uh, and uh. Call it DNS, right? So right now, when I, when I instantiate my application, I have the ability to create two stacks. One stack is going to be called DNS, 
and the other stack is going to be called main. So uh, if I would save this, um, now there's a few things I need to remove from the main stack, so this would work. So if I go and uh, DNS, or actually not DNS, it's the lib something, this one, yeah. So if I open this file, now I, I need to remove a bunch of things. We need to change things because um, here we have this route 53, which is going to go away. Mm -hmm. uh, this route yeah. 53 uh, object or resource is actually going to be removed and it's going to be created by something else, by a different stack. But the problem here that we have, and you will see a bunch of errors here, is that we are referencing that hosted zone somewhere. So if I go find the first error, there we go. Certificate is actually referencing a hosted zone object, right? So it's yeah. saying, hey, I cannot find this hosted zone object. Now, what we can do here is, and this is kind of a, this is um, a thing that Route 53 helps us with. We can actually define a hosted zone without defining a hosted zone. So uh, one of the things we can do here is we can do hosted zone again, the same thing. Oh, um, we do that lookup. Exactly. Yeah, we, like like we okay, did the first cool. time. We can do hosted zone and then from <clears throat> lookup, and then uh, self, not self, uh, self is Python. Uh, I'm going to go bean, uh, bean hosted zone like that. And then I need to find hosted zone properties. Now, I don't remember how this looks. I think um, we did this on the, we tried with the domain name first. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, no, we tried the, no, no, we tried, we tried the zone ID first, which didn't work. But this time with, I think we it do it. didn't with work. The, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm Let's do it with see. the domain. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I need to find how did we do this. So we need we define row 53 properties, right? So mm -hmm. um, just quickly, there's no way for us to reference this directly from the other stack where once I've spun it up, I can like export can. a variable or something. You, you can, you can. So that's that's possible. So the way we can reference this from a different stack is that uh, it has to be a cloud formation reference. Now, it is, it is, um, you can create an export in CloudFormation. CloudFormation export is basically mm -hmm. just stating, uh, defining a, v a value or something as an export. Okay. And that export can uh, can be uh, can be referenced by an API call. Basically, you reference CloudFormation, get its exports, and get that value. So if I would take a CloudFormation, um, um, if I would have a stack here that creates something, right? Like let's say it creates mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, a Route 53 hosted zone. Uh, one of the things that I can export from it is I can create an export of a zone ID, right? And then mm -hmm. here, what I can do is actually, I, I, it's not built into CDK, but I would have to reference mm -hmm. the CloudFormation export from that stack and get, put it here, right? Now, mm -hmm. because this is DNS, and DNS is one of the only things you can uh, basically um, statically name, and you should, <laughs> right? Uh. So I know already what is the name of my hosted zone, and I, I'm just gonna put it here. I don't have, I don't have to care about the ID, but I can just use the domain name, and that should work, right? So, um, the the problem here would be that uh, if my stack is created in a different region, I cannot mm -hmm. reference an export from a different region. Ah, okay. So that, that, that is the that problem. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That is the problem. So. Um, okay. So let me just uh, look at a few questions. Ahmed asking F and import. Yeah, basically F and import would, would do that. F and import mm. would import an export <laughs> value from an existing stack. But I wouldn't use F and import here. There is a way to directly import it with CDK. But uh, Danny uh, thrip, uh, quadruple 11 or quadruple one says do it in app.js. You can do that as well. You can pass things from stack to stack. That's that's how you should do it, right? You wouldn't do it here, right? You would actually do it in, um, in this. Wait, let me exit this. You would do it. Here, right? So you would basically reference things from specific mm. stacks here. But again, that stack needs to be created. And if, if you want to do um, references like um, imports, you would do it. You would do it here and use ah. it as a, as a parameter value in, well, in this thing, right? So what will be useful here actually is to pass in the DNS uh, or the domain name because we need it in both stacks. So we might as well define it over here and then pass Correct. it in. Correct. Um, and what I'm thinking is, why don't we comment out the bottom stack for now? Because yeah. then what we can do is we can, we can spin up this DNS stack, get the DNS service up and running. I can update our DNS, have that right. propagate, and then we jump back into the other one and fix it um, and get it back up and running. Sure, sure, absolutely. So let's actually mm. um, then do it like this. So uh, mm. there's a few things we need to define. So uh, not that, oops, I always, I, I did a lot of Python this week. So um, 
like that. Okay, let's remove that. And um, basically, we're gonna pass in a variable const call DNS uh, name like that. Or let's be that and call it um, what's the name? Bearded bald beans. Yes. Dot com. This is yep. the, this is the value we're gonna be passing in. So mm. I still sorry. I just need to let let my uh, second sidekick in quickly. Okay. Oh, he has a dog. So. <laughs> Um, oh, just one 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 comment uh, for Ricardo, uh, and this is a question here as well. Um, when you create those, hello, he's the best sidekick ever. Hey, doggy, do you prefer TypeScript or Python? Python, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, Ricardo asks, when you create those two stacks, are they processed sequentially? I think by default they uh, actually. So here's the thing, they're not, um, because here's okay, wait. I, mean, I haven't shown this, but uh, you see that I have two stacks here, like a DNS stack called uh, DNS, and I have a stack called main. So if I would go here and do CDK deploy, um, CDK deploy, it would complain because if I do CDK LS, I think, uh, would it work? It's gonna show see? me just one thing now. Yeah, yeah it's gonna show me DNS, right? But if I go and uncomment, this entire thing here, like so, save it and then do again CDKLS, it's gonna show me two stacks. I'm gonna have DNS mm. and main. If I would do CDK deploy, uh, it would not deploy, it would complain, say, you have to state if you CDK deploy, yeah. it will say which one, right? So I have to do it like that. So I would have to say, hey, CDK deploy DNS, and yeah. that's a good way to do it. I'm gonna just deploy mm. DNS and that's it. And uh, see, includes more than a single stack. Uh, mm. You have to do it that way. And Danny, um, Danny, one eleven, one eleven, eleven <laughs> says you can do add dependencies. You can actually do that. You can define dependencies, mm. saying that, for example, stack uh, uh, main depends on stack DNS. So I cannot de uh, cannot deploy stack main at all without having DNS being deployed. So yeah. that's, that's a way. That's actually nice to handle the the circular reference. I ran into that once. Um, yeah. Why did some Terraform and ended up having like everything calling everything and yeah. while it was working, you couldn't spin up a new version of it because yeah. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. So um uh, yeah. so there's a question here from uh guy stream gym streams. Uh gym streams, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh what are you guys showing? We are doing some CDK, so cloud development kit for AWS. We are building mm -hmm. uh fully fledged application uh, on AWS. It's a container based application with all the pipelines, all the DNS, all the certificates, all the load balancers, everything <coughs> you want. But we're fixing it now because we've yes. we've done a bad thing. We've done, every, done everything in a single no, stack. No, 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 no. Let's clarify that we didn't do a bad thing. We okay. did what you often do when you start off, which is we started hacking things together Fair to point. get it to a point where it worked. Okay. And now yep. what we're doing is we're going through the uh, getting rid of our technical debt. Exactly. Get we are paying off our loans. Paying off our loans right now. So we're moving everything yeah. from a single big old stack, as everybody does when you start off, um, and we're moving mm -hmm. into multiple stacks. So hey, this is a good, good, good thing to learn. Hey, you have to do this sometimes. Mm. So now to kind of make our lives a bit easier, we have we're going to introduce a DNS a variable here that we're going to pass on into this um, into this application, right? So into this stack. Now I actually forgot how to do this. Um, I have, an, I, have a, I have an example here somewhere where I do this a bit more. So let me give, give me a second. So if I go to uh, yeah here, I want to just copy paste an example that I've done before. Um, so I need to, yeah, okay. It's just passing a simple value like this, that simple. Um, all right. So I will just basically do it like this and call it, uh, the va variable is called DNS name and it's gonna be DNS name. Mm. That's it. So, so that's an interesting question there um, that uh, Ahmed is bringing up is that this constant DNS name, is this variable available in both of the stacks or do we need to pass it in like you're We have to now? pass it to, we have, so any variable you wanna pass into a stack, you need to pass it like this. So basically what I've done here on line 12, uh, it's, it's complaining now because I need to fix it in the stack itself because it doesn't mm. know how, what to do with this. Um, mm. it, basically okay. line 12 tells it, hey, use this variable as a parameter to creation this, creating the stack. Now it's not a call formation parameter. It's just a CDK parameter of va variable we're passing to that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 
Um, so one of the things I need to do right now is actually go into this one and do the following. Now, I don't remember the co code by heart, but it's something like... Um, no. Uh, so I'll pop up the next question for us after this, because yeah. I also I've got an idea of this, but I'd like to get your uh, feedback on this, which is. Sure. Go ahead. Could you pass resource IDs in this fashion as well? And my understanding is no. The reason is that you instantiate these two different objects. Well, where's my hands on the screen? Sorry. Mm -hmm on their own and there's no link directly between them because they'll probably be created in this order where first one, second one. So potentially from the first one, if you do those values, we can pot, we can see, but not so easily. You, you, can, you can do it, um, you can do it dynamically, right? So, um, because if you're using CloudFormation exports, right? So um, if you're using a CloudFormation export in stack A, so let's, 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 uh, let me go back to this thing. This kind of illustrates this the best way. So I have two stacks here, right? So I have uh, the DNS stack and I have the main stack. Mm -hmm. So let's say I want to I want to take a value out of DNS stack and put it into uh, the bean stream, the main stack. One of the things I would have to do is I would have to do a call formation import, uh, basically an import of an export from this stack. Now, uh, it will it will work only if I have the DNS created before. Now I have not tried this uh, per se, so uh, I'm saying this in in theory. That's how it should work, right? So, I am I am definitely gonna have to go and, and explore this because this is a, an issue I ran into last no this week actually when I was trying to build something and there was a no easy way to do this. So it had to be exports and imports. So that's how would you how would you pass resource IDs? It's not the most elegant solution. I mean, I would love mm. it if I could just do you know a main uh, you know like do a var and then do you know. Um, uh, I don't know stack dot uh, main dot you know ID whatever like if this would if this was possible this would be amazing but it doesn't work so mm. <laughs> it's it's it it just doesn't doesn't support that right at all so uh, but seeing that this is and this is this kind of a, uh, brings me to a question um, um, fr from Dream Warfare um, uh, what are the use cases for CDK versus CloudFormation this is kind of the, this brings the benefit of CDK versus CloudFormation you have the power of a language, a programming language in your hands to do mm -hmm. whatever you want. So if I would basically import AWS SDK in this case, and I can make a, a, a AWS SDK call to do anything and get me a value. And then from that value, I can do X and Y, right? So that's kind of a thing, right? So uh, <laughs> CDK is a JSON parser for CloudFormation. Yes, CDK creates CloudFormation templates, but because of the uh, additional functionality on CDK, like you know, using Python and JavaScript, you can you can get a lot of things done, right? So um, you know, defining variables like this, doing magic with variables, doing concatenation, uh, checking things. Hey, uh, you want to check a, 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 a resource in an external thing like an API? Hey, I run an API on my cluster at home. I want to get a value from this before I run my CDK code. Mm. I can. It's possible to do it with CDK. So uh, it's it's you don't have to, you know, create custom resources and you know fiddle around with lambdas to get you those values. You can do it straight from here. So that's kind of a thing. Uh, this is quite amusing. It is, <laughs> and it is. This so, is very. <laughs> it's very close. Where's that joke I had up here? We there we go. It's very close to this one. Exactly. <laughs> well, CDK is a DSL. It turns it turns JavaScript into 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 JSON. So, <laughs> mm, yeah. Cool. Oh, yes, coffee. Sorry, yeah, double yeah, coffee. coffee. This is actually coffee. quite a fun one. Uh, the first DevOps days that I hosted, with, they made us a Nyan whale for Docker. Um, oh, one of the sponsors. So it's a it's a Nyan whale. Yeah. Nice. Um, So cool. here's a, here's a here's a um, another just qu question to answer quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Modern Wiz uh, ran into issue with CloudFormation where creation of RDS read replicas is failing because of the master database status is still not available. Um, so are you so here here's my question: Are you just creating the read replicas from an existing master database, or um, because I'm not sure how are you doing it this this way. Uh, or are you doing this entire like RDS creation from CDK? Because RDS creation from CDK is very good. It's uh, Ricardo actually played around with this, and I've did I've did it this week, and it's so good. It does things, it does it does things very intelligently for you. It creates all the things. It stores passwords and parameter store. 
sorry, in Secrets Manager. So it, it, it is very, very good. So maybe you can explain on this and, and we can comment on it. But mm. back to code. It's complaining here. It yes. doesn't know what to do with DNS name. What, what is this? What should I do with it? Aha. Go to my um, stack and I've created an interface. Basically, an interface is here. Hey, this is my stack properties. I'm extending my stack properties and I'm going to call this um, DNS stack props, right? Props like that. And I'm going to define which properties can this stack accept. I'm going to say DNS name and it's going to be a string. Like that, right? And one of the things I need to do here, uh, properties are going to be actually DNS stack perhaps like this. I believe this is the correct way to do it. Just add this. No, add. Uh, what am I missing? Props. I'm missing this and I'm missing this. Excellent. Now this should be fine. Now this is actually... Um, should should work right now. So if I go back here and save, mm -hmm. this should hopefully no longer complain. It still complains, but all right, we'll see. We'll see when we try to launch it. So mm. <laughs> it might just... not have loaded the file yet. Yeah, yeah. It oh, it might be just my Although Vim it configuration. Shouldn't. Mm. It, it could be just my my Vim configuration. So DNS name, DNS name. That's all fine, and it should be okay-ish here because I don't see an error here happening. So let's do it. Um, um, and then he says, best thing about CDK are permissions. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, mm. Giving permissions to somebody, something with S, uh, CDK is just, just, just the best. Um, okay. So this actually should work now. The only thing uh, I'm going to actually pass it on here instead of zone name, I'm going to do the value here called DNS name, right? I'm going to just take that okay. as a parameter, right? So, um, cannot find name DNS name, uh, buddy, what? You should. Um, second. Props. Aha, sorry. Mm. Props. Dot DNS name. There we go. This. So it should basically do that. Uh, it's currently undefined. It's possibly undefined, but it is actually defined because it's here. It's optional, right? Because it's optional, but. Uh, I can do it like that and it will not be optional. So there we go. So I'm basically saying, hey, yeah. yeah. So I'm taking a property mm -hmm. uh, from line six, right? So line six is, is saying, hey, a DNS name is string. This uh, property is actually belongs to the props, right? And then to define it actually in an object, I'm using props dot the name of the property. And that's how it should work. Now, famous last words here, right? Um, as you can see, it's, it's good now. It's being used. It's no, no longer complaining. And now, if I would go to here and do repose, what is the name of the bean streaming thing, right? Yeah, if I do CDK deploy uh, DNS, mm -hmm. let's see if this works. <laughs> I have not tried this, so <laughs> let's see if this works. I mean, in, in essence, it should work. So it's deploying, a, it's creating a cloud formation cha change set for this stack. Um, it will fail if it doesn't re receive the proper parameters. So uh, yeah, there we go. So okay. Let me see. Uh, sorry, I'm also making notes over here. Mm -hmm. As we go along, part of our new way of doing things, uh, we are going to have show notes and links and discussions. Yes, yes. we've been horrible with that. So um, oh. it would be great if we can do that. So. Okay, uh, this is being created. No, what this is? Hey, Stuart. Hi, hi, hi. Everyone, welcome to the streams. You can't see the AD. Oh, I moved my camera a bit. So uh, Stuart is co commenting about my monitor here. It's the Commodore 1081. <laughs> we should actually do a session where we just geek out on random things. We can. Because I... I think this is a lot of fun. I have so many things to geek out on. It's perfectly fine. Mm. Uh, so while this is deploying, and, and actually Ricardo is asking here a question, um, uh, do you have any handy tips on how to read, understand how to use CDK documentation? I struggle sometimes. Ah, um, yes. So <laughs> it is, and 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 this is not only you, Ricardo. It's it's a lot of like I when I when I started um, when I started doing um, CDK, the documentation was very difficult for me, especially because I don't come from a developer background and I'm not used to the CDK 
API documentation as some people mm. are as well. But I'll give you a few tips. If you if you go to like a CDK, I don't know, let's, let's do Route 53. So you look up the module here, and, and this is a TypeScript example, but um, it, it mostly applies to the same things for, for, for the other things, right? So usually on the overview page, this is will you, where you will get your examples. This is where you will have a simple example how to do certain things, right? So looking at, um, you know, kind of adding records or imports or those kind of things, right? So this is kind of like, this is something we need to do. So this is this is something we're looking for, and this is something mm -hmm. we're going to be have to have to do on the other stack, right? So this is a great example where you can pick up some code and do do it that way. But if you want to do something more, for example, if you want to create an A record, um, and you can most likely do it from this example here, it just works fine. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to create an A record, you click on the A record on the side, like the object itself, and this is where you have like the entire uh, construction prop properties. This is like what do you need to create this thing? If you create a new A record, and then the things you need to define. Now, a couple of things you need to always define when creating a new object, at least in TypeScript. You need to define a scope, and the scope in this case is gonna be a construct. So the scope in this case is gonna be, most of the time, just this, literally just this. It's saying, hey, in this mm -hmm. construct, create this, right? ID is just an identification string. It's a super, super simple string that says, hey, this is the object ID. I'm not sure where the ID is actually used. I'm not that good with TypeScript, but uh, uh, it's usually just a little identification ID that you're going to be, it's just a string. And then the properties are the basically the A record properties in this case. It's a set of properties you need or should define when creating a record. A tip here, if you have a question mark next to the pro uh, property name, mm. it's, it's optional. It's not required. So in essence, what we see here, you need a target and a zone to create um, um, uh, an object. But target and zones are actually not strings. They're, they're different objects. things. They're objects. They're a record target mm -hmm. or an I hosted zone. So if I want to say I want a zone, uh, I need to define a zone. I cannot just do bar build, bearded bald beans .com. I actually have to define mm -hmm. a zone object in this case. So uh, if I go here and say, um, hey, what is... What is um, interface basically? How do, how mm -hmm. is how can I get this? And simple here it says implemented by, and you can see which uh, objects or which resources are actually implementing these things. So if if I create a hosted zone, right? And here's an example: obtainable from hosted zone from lookup. That's it, and that's what we're going to be doing. Mm. So to create an A record, I need to create a hosted zone object or interface. And I'm going to create it by using hosted zone dot from lookup and then just generate that. So that's kind of my advice when you understand what kind of properties you're using. That's very important to understand what properties and what type of properties they are and how to get those things. Mm -hmm. So this made my life much easier. Okay, um, this has been created. Uh, quick answer to Boon Chu Twitch. Why is it taking so long? Uh, well, uh, formation. Plot formation. <laughs> Short answer. Short yeah. answer. Yeah. Long answer. Yeah. So, Kubus, we need to do something before we continue. We need to do Route yes. 53. So, uh -huh. um, I am standing by. Exactly. So, I need to give you some Route 53 um, records, name yes. servers, records. So, I have a hosted zone created here. Um, and I'm going to get you these things. Hmm, what would be the oh. best way? What, what would be the best way for me to paste? Let me try to do it from a different computer because. Um. Um, I am not logged into well, any chat application on this side, so. No, no, it's all good. If you give me two seconds, uh, here we can go. You, um, can you retype it or should I? Uh, yes, I just want to retype it. I just need to quickly get my screen. So it's NS 904. 904, what's this uh, last number? Uh, 90449. 49.net. Um, .net. Okay, cool. And then it's a ns4305.com. Uh, is that what it is? That works? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. These are, uh, and it's a dot com. Yeah, you'll see they're spread across uh, different domains uh, in terms of top level domains as well. Yeah. And it's a 1456. Uh, 1456. Um, 54.org. Typing the so it's interesting. with Darko and Kobus. Yeah. Yeah. 
1850 um, and 39.co.uk. Let me just quickly double check. So um, let me read them and can you confirm them um, as I read them quickly? So NS904 dot AWS DNS dash 49 dot net. Yep. NS dash 45 dot AWS DNS dash 03 dot com. 05 dot com. 005. Okay. First mistake. Uh, NS1456 dot AWS DNS dash 54 dot org. Yeah. NS dash 1850 dot AWS DNS dash 39.co.uk. Cool. Okay, updating. Okay, um, so, so interesting fact here is sure. that uh, um, Route 53 is a service that has got a 100% um, SLA on it. Yes. <laughs> mm. That's the only service that has 100% SLA. Mm, I think so, yeah. The only thing, other, other thing that has 100% in our services is SQS. There's 100% um, that the message will be delivered. Mm. So I think that's a, it's, it's a, I think that's the, oh, another, another 100% well, uh, in Okay, okay. Cave caveat. It will be delivered at least once. At least once, yeah. yeah, that's a, it. yeah. Message delivery is it's one of those things where you think, I've got a message, I just want to get it somewhere else to process. <laughs> Statement is simple. Yeah. It is, if you go into the theory, <laughs> confirming that and making sure is incredibly difficult in a distributed oh, yeah. system. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, if you want to have fun, go, um, go read up on the two generals problem. Basically, um, short summary of it is there's, there's the city. You've got two generals. They want to attack... Um, the city at a given time. They're a certain distance apart and they don't have any instant communications, no cell phones. So General 1 sends a messenger over to General 2 saying, attack tomorrow morning at 11. General 2 then needs to respond and say, yes. But General 1 then uh, needs to send back to General 2 saying, yes, yes. But then you keep going this yes, 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 back and forth because there's no mechanism to validate did we actually get the last yes, yes or not. Um, <laughs> because you don't want to say, I'm going to attack unless you tell me not to because then you might miss each other. It's yeah. a yeah. It's it is a lot of interesting it's a, things. It's a really nice thought experiment for sure. Um, mm. um, okay, while while we are waiting, we're just gonna wait a bit here because um, 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 it takes a moment for the it's DNS, right? It takes a moment for this to happen, and I can maybe answer yeah. some questions here uh, while we are doing this. So, um, Modern Ways actually uh, uh, appended his question. So um, he created an RDS uh, master DB read replica one read replica two using a single confirmation template depending that depends on but read replica two fails because master DB is still modifying config. Mm. Uh, okay, so um, this is definitely uh, a race condition when it comes to cloud formation, right? So um, because the resource in itself, um, so if you do depends on um, y y y the the re this, so if you do it depends on in cloud formation, the the resource that is that has the depends on on something else will have to will wait until the other resource has completed its whatever it's doing. Now, what does that mean? Really depends. Um, so when it comes to uh, RDS, uh, it basically will say it's complete once the database has finished com creating, which in essence doesn't mean the database is completely done. There might be some things. Um, still been going on. I'm not sure what exactly could be happening here, mm. but most likely the DNS, the database, uh, the RDS database here um, just doesn't finish creating. So the read replica one and read replica two can be part of its, um, well, part of that cluster. Now, um, what what is great about CDK is that if you create a database in CDK, right? If you do, um, I may even have an example somewhere. Um, so if you do like, uh, where is it? It's this one. Um, so just while Doc entertains you, excuse me for a second, I'll be back in one minute. Yeah, it's the Doc. Uh, so I have an example here uh, how to do uh, RDS. Too fast in typing. So how to do an RDS database in CDK. And this is a Python example. But in general, um, what it does here is... I'm creating a database cluster. Now, this will have at least one read replica. It's, it's a cluster with a reader and a writer, right? So, um, but but CDK here actually handles everything for you. So you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, adding read replicas manually and those things. So um, trying it with C CDK may help modern ways. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if your exact use case, um, if you would be using it in the same way by adding read replicas, that might be the same problem again. Um, 
in CloudFormation, there's no way for you to check if something is done. One of the one of the ways you can do here is maybe do some explicit checks in in in, in CDK, uh, yeah, in in, in 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 TypeScript or Python, and that could potentially help. But um, um, maybe just doing the this the natively way in CDK could could be uh, could be um, could be better. Uh, then he asks, can you link the Git for this project? Uh, and I don't know why Twitch chat is not working. I don't know why Twitch chat is not working either. So, uh, Danny, are you talking about this project that we're building right now? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so, GitHub. Oh, actually, let me do it on a different screen because uh, I don't have chat on this laptop. So, where is GitHub? GitHub. Um, GitHub.com. Because uh, where is it being streamed? came from. And now it's 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 currently a mess. So this entire project is a mess. Don't 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 um, don't bet on it too much. There are some things that we need to. Uh... Okay, cool. Uh, Denny, I didn't ask anything. I just ask you: uh, Are you asking about this project that we're building right now? So the 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 application and all that stuff. So, but I have pasted that link. Uh, in chat right now, so you can see, you can see there. It's currently running on my own Git repo, uh, Git uh, uh, GitHub account, but um, we're gonna make sure it's nicer. It's currently just a, a thing with 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 some code from two weeks ago, so it's not the ref the freshest. But we're gonna be committing after we finish this. We're gonna be committing the code later on. Okay, so um, while Kovis is gone, I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, work with our uh, other stack, right? So actually, let's add a few things here to our stack. I'm going to be adding the, the DNS name, on the uh, same as before. It's going to complain because, again, there is no property on the DNS name uh, side. So let's actually go into here. Uh, actually, no. Let's create, a, again, another interface here like that and paste it in. Well, bam. Uh, I'm going to do main stack, stack props like so and do it like... Uh, that and do like that and main stack props right main stack props. ah passing an object instead of just the string well I'm gonna pass a pass a special string here anyway uh, because uh, I, mm -hmm. I don't I don't have a way to create an object from from the main one at least we're right not right now uh, but I'm passing a string still the same way I'm doing it in, in before but um I am actually gonna um, the thing I'm gonna be doing here is uh, da, da, da. I can actually see this is a fair point, um, but this would require so, me. So okay, so this is a, this is a, a point here about uh, this is a point about uh, importing resources. Mm. So if you want to import an existing resource, let's say I want to import an existing DNS name. So in my account, I have a DNS zone called. Um, uh, Rope12.net, right, or XYZ. So if I want to do something like this, I would have to basically do um, something like uh, t -t 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 like this. Mm -hmm. I can do this, paste it in, um, and do like uh, imports. I can do um, call it a const uh, rup 12 So just on. yeah. Find a question quickly. Is there no way for you to pass the entire stack into the second stack? No. No. Oh. No. I mean, okay. so this is where you define the stacks. I mean, you can you can pass <clears throat> an entire uh, uh, construct. So if I would create a library construct that doesn't mm -hmm. create a stack but just creates a bunch of resources, I can <clears throat> import that to a different stack. That's fine. But a different uh, one stack to another stack, no, you can't do that. Unfortunately, you can create nested stacks. That's one way to do it. Yeah. Nested, then he said, you can do nested stacks, but not directly like this. So I can mm. do it like this, and then I can do um, this, and then um, rop 12, and then I would do domain name, uh, domain name equals rop12.xyz. Um, now, what this would do, this would create an object, right? So mm. this will create an object. Um, is it not domain name? What is what it? What does the docs say? I just seen it before, and it's it's domain name. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oops. 
uh, properties. I must say this uh, VI magic of keystrokes, we hear like three, four chords being created and then one thing like <laughs> happening. It's like <laughs> I've always, it's one of those like high on my list of things to learn, but just never have enough time to consist, consistently spend on it to embed it in my brain. Because I've right, right, right. gone through it a couple of times. Like, so I know some of the chords, but yeah, not all of them. Um, okay, so this is where my this is something where I show I have never done this. I cannot use this. I can do on prepare or uh, on uh, if I do this. I cannot do this on this. I have to do it on something else. So uh, uh, there is not assignable uh, parameter type construct uh, is missing properties construct node. So mm -hmm. I need to define a construct. I, I'm not sure which construct to use here, right? Uh, so uh, this is something where I would have to figure out how to do this. But in essence, mm. um, if I would create an object like this, right? So uh, it wouldn't be this. It would be something else here. I'm not sure what. Now, this is where my limitation of TypeScript comes in. But I can create an object here, right? And instead of passing a, a simple a string like this, I can also pass a DNS and just do uh, Rob 12. The object. And this mm. will actually pass an object. So And I can then use that object later on so this is kind of a, a great way to do it but i'm not gonna do it right now so um because i suck so um a few questions here um mm. uh, does AWS have a language that is used more that is a very fun question the answer is uh Perfect. i want to say it uh no actually i want to say i'm assuming is this so sorry just quickly clarify are you meaning language that people who build on aws use more or that we internally build on, uh, because obviously we've got a whole host of different languages that we build AWS on. Um, if you can clarify that first, then we can uh, answer the question, I think, uh, but a bit better. It depends. As, oh. As, as Ricardo says, it depends. Yeah. And we've already used our banner today. Have we? Have we? No, we haven't. I don't know. Let's no, check. There we go. Time. Boom. Banner is ready. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So it really depends. Um, mm. um, so, oh, stack of this. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you, Danny. Um, so, I, I, the internal language, I would say Java. Like the build, the thing we build in with, um, that would be Java. Mm. The, the things we build our services in, that would be, I, I would, I, at least my experience would be mostly it's Java. Uh, but, um, there's, but there's a fair amount of Ruby. Um, there is there is a lot of Ruby. Yeah, I've seen a lot. Of, yeah. Seen a lot of Ruby. I've seen Perl. Um, no PHP. There's though. also some. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think just just clar clar clarify that PHP statement. Um, I think a bit more because it's not that you know PHP is a bad language. It's just at the point when things were being built, there were some issues with the PHP language. Yeah. Um, that made it inappropriate for the type of services that we were building. And because of that, it was a uh, um, put on the list of language. Well, it's the only language on that list, I believe, that we're not supposed to use. Correct. Um, yeah. But I mean, we, there's even some. PHP is a, is a not used language um, in, in, in AWS at all. So, mm, yeah. And also, one of the reasons why Java, for example, is uh, used the most is that I think we've got the richest tooling around it. Because at yep. the end of the day, um, it's not just about can I sling out code. It's can I sling out code with libraries that do things for me, with build tools and everything else that makes a lot of things easier, makes it fast, for, able for me to go faster um, and safely, of course. So okay. hopefully, uh, let us know if that answers the question, uh, Isabella. Um, uh, and Danny, uh, did you mean to use stack of this? I, I don't know. Like that's the thing. I, I don't really know how to do this in this case. I, I would I would guess mm. it's something like that. So that's something I need to figure. And I tried it blindly right now. So I could have maybe just looked into the documentation, but it's it's not important right now because we're not importing anything that's existing uh, because we're just creating <clears> things. The the way I would use it because um, if I had an existing domain created out completely outside of this or a, or a, or a database that's created completely outside of this application, yes, I would import it as an object. It would be the best way to do it. Uh, in this case, the only thing I'm defining here is a variable, uh, just a string saying beard, balder, beans. And this string says to stack one or the DNS stack, hey, create this domain name with bearded, bald beans. And then in the second stack, it says, hey, uh, use the DNS name to create an object, a hosted zone object, Mm -hmm. from a lookup that basically looks up domain name props.dns name. 
and that's it. Now, in essence, Kovas, this should work. So, uh, I should. know, famous last words and all those things, but in essence, if I would do CDK deploy main, so if I would go, nope, nope, like that, uh, like that, and if I would do CDK deploy main, this mm -hmm. should deploy. But everything. it's... Uh, with the caveat that it might hang with the DNS certificates because it'll wait for validation. Exactly. And that might not work yet, depending on how we have our, um, uh, exactly. if our DNS is propagated. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. So I'm going to, I'm going to whack this and see if it works. I mean, it's, it's going to fail if CloudFormation is bad, but I think it's okay, okay now because it will, mm. it will already comp complain that it's bad. The, the only thing that where, it, where it will hang or it will take a moment or so, it's going to, uh, do it on the certificate validation because it takes a DNS certificate validation and it's DNS. And it's also going to hang on because it's creating a CloudFront distribution and cloud, CloudFront distributions takes a moment a moment or so to create. Mm. So that yep. may, be a, may be a while. Um, mm. Stuart asks, do certificates get loaded onto the ELB? Yes, absolutely. Yes. So where did, we, where did we do this? Um, so just quickly for those, let me clarify how the certificates work. Is um, if you aren't familiar with it, um, there's a service in Amazon called, uh, or in AWS called Amazon Certificate Manager, and that allows you to uh, request uh, SSL certificates for any domain, and also you can add alternative names. So you can have, I think, up to thirty alternatives. So right. in our case, we do uh, uh, beardedboldbeans.com as well as www. Bolded, um, or bearded ball beans .com as well. Then what happens is that you can validate with one or two ways. And the reason you need to validate is that we're not just going to give you an SSL cert because you say, say tell us, hey, I own this domain because guess what? A lot of people will try and yeah. get domains out of um, certificates out of the way. And we kind of have to make sure that, you know, we don't serve um, encrypted traffic on a domain that you don't own. So how do we say that you own it? Well, we go talk to the registrar. Now, the registrar is where the, the topmost level of who owns a specific domain and has all the configs. In there are two things. One, it's a list of email addresses associated with this domain. So the validation mechanism we used to have is that we send out a mail to each one of those email addresses, and one of them needs to click OK in that email to say, yes, um, we accept this, which then calls back into our system saying, cool, you just proved you can get this email, which means you own the domain. Um, the second mechanism that we have is by asking you to add a DNS entry. Now, yeah. how that works is it's a CNAME record that points, um, it's a long number underscore at the front, which we'll see in a bit, that points to one of our um, services as well, which means that how it works in the background, we constantly check, can we do a lookup against that? And one, as soon as that CNAME resolves correctly, it means that request goes through to our service, um, which then makes um, us be able to say, sure, you can add DNS records, therefore you own the domain, which is why we can then say, okay, cool, now here's your domain or your SSL certificate. Exactly, and and this is what we've done here. So if you look at the code that we have here, um, not that, but that, yes. So this uh, line thirty three, we're creating a certificate, but um, instead of having to create a certificate and then manually validate it, we're actually creating a DNS validated certificate, which is uh, just a construct from CDK, and this makes it a bit easier uh, by saying, yeah. "Hey, um, this is my domain name, right?" Um, and my subject alternative name is this one, and hosted zone is this one, right? So it yeah. basically creates a certificate. But it uh, uses this hosted zone to create this entry. It automatically creates an A entry, A record with no A record or TXT record, TXT record. Uh, mm. It creates a TXT record no, no. in this C name. C name. C name. Ah, okay. okay. C name. It's okay. C name. <laughs> it creates a C name record, um, basically with a big old string that authenticates this record against um, this domain, and then um, to, uh, the, the the ALB part is actually here. So we're basically telling the load balancer. We create a load balancer. Then on the load balancer, we create a listener. A listener is just a thing that well, listens, right? Saying, hey, mm -hmm. port 443, listen. But here, here's your certificate. And just passing the object we created before. So it's it's so much, at least compared to CloudFormation, it's so much smoother. <clears throat> it's so much more. Mm. Mm, I love it. So uh, I was a big fan of CloudFormation. I still am. I love, I love CloudFormation at the, where I started. But CDK does it so much better. So, so much yeah. better. I mean... The ability here just literally to have different um, DNS certificates like this, because remember, let's say you are deploying multiple different services with load balancers. Um, this is how many five lines of code uh, to get to get yeah. a certificate, and then uh, where's uh, how many more? Another five lines to actually add it. Ooh. So it's 
I mean, imagine that, how quickly it is to do it, and you don't have to yep. worry, you can configure it. Yep. Okay, we failed. Something failed uh, on CDK. So, uh, what did it fail? The, the best way to see this, because this is this, this creates a CloudFormation template, just to go to CloudFormation and see what actually has failed. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would say it's something to do with DNS. I kinda, it's kind of in my inkling that that would be the problem. Mm -hmm. um, there we go. Cancel. Okay. Ah, NAT gateways. <laughs> oh, you've got another... I'm missing. I'm missing a NAT gateway. I have. I have a limit on NAT gateway. So most likely, and yeah. here's the thing: I have a lot of things created already. So uh, because I was preparing a demo. <laughs> okay, let me actually fix this. So this um, was me one week ago, wasn't it? Yeah. So I was preparing a bunch of demos here uh, for um, for for a talk I need to do, and if I I created a three VPCs at least. And and each VPC has at least two NAT gateways. So I basically reached my limit mm. in NAT gateways. I can increase my limit, but I, I can just do CDK destroy uh, like that. Uh, I'm gonna destroy the database. It's gonna destroy all that all mm. that stuff. Let me actually go back one more and do this one. CDK, I need to source because, uh, because Python, CDK mm. destroy. Clean up your toys, kids. Um, <laughs> CDK, yeah. Mm. Uh, Roth 53 uh, source. Is there anybody from Ireland or or Australia in chat? I see Stuart is. I think Stuart, uh, yeah. Austria, He's Aussie flag. Icon, yeah. Um, so uh, Stuart, I apologize, but I have to do this. CDK destroy Sydney. Oh, uh, <laughs> Tokyo smash. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I need to destroy Sydney because I have a stack called Sydney. Uh, so <laughs> Sydney is going to be go uh, gone. Region, maybe or not. not city. Yeah. Uh, mm. <laughs> So um, this just while we, uh, yeah. we'll wait for that, two more questions here. Uh, the first one is from Isabella uh, saying, I meant, would, uh, I meant what would be a strong qualification to work with AWS, um, but we helped, yeah. Like I said, if, if it, building on top of AWS, um, I would say pretty much any language that you're familiar with. If you are, uh, frame the question in what language for, for example, CDK, um, if you don't have any, for example, language background, I would at this point um, recommend JavaScript or preferably TypeScript. Uh, purely because the way that CDK works under the hood is that everything goes from whatever language into TypeScript, from TypeScript into CloudFormation, which means a lot of the examples are actually in TypeScript at the moment. Right. Obviously, we're working to improve that, but that's probably where you'll get the most examples. Yeah, yeah. And from the service things perspective, people who are building the services, I've seen most are Java and Ruby. So, I mean, but again, the way we do services, I mean, we have multiple, you, you know, services mm. written in different languages, so it really depends on which where you fall into. Mm. And some services are, are created in different regions, uh, so yeah, it, it really depends. Mm. And there's another one here from Stuart, which is, why can't Amazon be authoritative DNS? So you can have Amazon as authoritative DNS in yeah. the sense that uh, you can register domains inside your AWS account. But yeah. remember, at the end of the day, how... Route 53 as a service works is that I can co-create any Route 53 zone that I want to. Um, and I need to be able to prove that I own that domain. So the mechanism of proving it is the same on any account for anything. Yeah. We didn't want to build something in that, oh, just because you've got the domain registered in this account, because remember, that doesn't always hold true in terms of where you want the, uh, the DNS to sit. Because right. you might have your registrar here, and that registrar points to this other account over here like we are doing which means that if you go and put your DNS over here or your certificates over here, just because you've got the registrar up here shouldn't be a, a, a valid reason for giving you that certificate. You have to prove you can interact with it. Correct, correct. So that's what we're doing here. We, 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 mm. and, and, and so a bit weird here because Cobus has registered his domain name. So Cobus has actually registered this DNS name on his account. So not in my account, but in my account, I'm actually creating um, the, the the hosted zone within my AWS account. Then what? Mm. Then the manual thing that happens here. I tell Cobus, hey, use these name servers to point your DNS to my hosted zone, and then anything I created yeah. in my hosted zone is actually applied to that domain. So mm. that's how it works. I mean, ideally, you would have this. Uh, you would have these things created beforehand. You don't mess with Route 53 hosted zones that much on an ongoing mm. basis because. Yes, you can, but it's it's that's why I create a separate stack here. Just I don't have to delete mm -hmm. Route 53 and every time I have to call up Kobe's and say, hey, change your name servers because no. Yeah. Uh, oh, we Douglas, just hit the one hour, yes. Yeah, it's only one hour. Um, is it yes. too much, Douglas? <laughs> uh, we, we still have no, half an hour, so, though. Yeah. 
Yeah, so just quickly, Douglas, what we did is we initially tried to fit everything into an hour, and we realized because we're doing a lot of coding and debugging and discussing things along the way, we actually extended this to a 90-minute um, session um, um, just because we, um, we felt that it's uh, useful. Oh, yes, sorry, Douglas is late. Don't worry. Um, oh, no you can go and catch up if you wanted to on YouTube because we are um, – this episode is also streaming to our YouTube channel, yeah. which, by the way, just quickly, let me pop that up on the screen. Um we would appreciate if um, all of you actually go and uh, subscribe to it because we would like to give it a nice custom name so we don't yeah. have to do this bitly redirect. Yeah, um, we, we have we have less than 100 subscribers there. So if we get 100, we get mm -hmm. uh, we can give it a name. So finally, yeah. Oh, well, at so least we get would... a nice URL. Yeah. Also, if, if anybody's from Ireland or Dublin, I'm sorry. Um, Jeepers. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm destroying. I'm destroying cities, um, uh -uh. stacks, regions. What? <laughs> Uh, okay, this is still being deleted. Thanks. Oh, that's saying. actually funny. So, um, at a previous company, we had weird internal team names just because people were interesting. So, uh, when I joined and helped um, form up the the platform slash what was we couldn't call it the platform team because one of the products was literally called platform. Okay. So we did go in the end with kind of dev, DevOps team, but we you don't want to call it a DevOps team because then people expect things. So what we ended up <laughs> going with is uh, the Japanese name for Godzilla, which is Gojira. Gojira. Um, which is fine up until the point that someone pointed out, like, are you really that, such big fans of Jira that you just want to shout Gojira the whole time? Gojira. To rob tickets. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although have we did use Jira. Jira. Have you ever used Jira in production? Like, like, um, Darko, uh, one day over many beers, I will tell you how go uh, how Jira got me fired. Wow. Okay. I I've, I've never used Jira in my life. I know people complain about Jira. Uh, I, I I cannot. I can I can only say what I heard about it. Like that it's you know tedious and it's just very you know, day five. But uh, I cannot say from for um, first 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 hand it, it, experience. So. It's it's not that the, the my experience has been the hate that comes from uh, from it is that people tend to try and build this complicated process to solve people problems because Jira is very configurable. It's meant to solve a lot of problems, and then people put something way too complex in place, okay. and it's just a mess to use. Um, that's been my experience. I personally, when I set it up and I use it for projects, I'm enjoying it. Um, okay. I mean, the interface is clean. It works. You've got a nice API. Um, but that's been my experience. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I've I've had the same I had the same bad experience with Microsoft SharePoint. While I find SharePoint's um, SharePoint's place, SharePoint has a place in this world, right? Let's not joke about it. SharePoint really can do a lot of good things. Mm. But a lot of people who get to use SharePoint or, or decide to use SharePoint try to mm. ham fist it in to something like, oh, you have to use SharePoint for everything now because we have SharePoint. Yep. I remember once I was actually. We spend uh, like thousands of euros to implement SharePoint, and because that was decided to do it, I'm like oh, we need SharePoint, and it was not my decision; it was somebody else's decision. And I knew SharePoint, I'm like Darko, mm -hmm. you're gonna implement SharePoint, and uh, we ended up like you know forcing it. Oh, we're gonna make internal websites in SharePoint. It's gonna be amazing. It's not. It's mm -hmm. no, no. And then I I started hating SharePoint because like it's not how it should be used. So, but SharePoint can do a lot of good things. So. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the, the amusing thing here is just a little bit of uh, lifting the lid on how we do things internally at AWS is that um, before I joined, I also expect like lots and lots of complicated systems with workflows and I need to go figure out how to do things. And now that I'm on the inside, I realize that the best way to get something done is communication. communication. Where, for example, if we, we plan out a dev day, uh, yeah. which is a normally a three-track um, um like mini conference type thing. Yeah. There is a person that's the contact with the actual marketing team that does the logistics for figuring out where where's the venue, what's happening and all of that. Um, but then for the actual content, it's a, there's a spreadsheet and we chat and we say yeah. who's doing what, what, what's the content, how do you want to shape it? That's legit. You jump on a call, you flesh it out and then everybody um, goes ahead and actually sorts it out. It's a, we, we've tried, for example, using a ticketing system for that, but that's just, it's so much effort that it gets complicated and you miss things. It's just like, just talk to people. Yeah, and we're a company of hundreds of thousands of people, right? And mm. the fact that you can communicate it effective, effectively is the thing that keeps us moving because mm. it's it's it go, all goes down to the to the two pizza team talk, right? You have a small enough team that the communication paths are small enough, so you can communicate mm -hmm. with things. Like 
if we want to organize an event with you know 20 people uh, behind it, just literally reach out to those people via email or Slack or something, yeah. and then we have an Excel spreadsheet that everybody can access, and it literally works, and it, and it works. It's not there's yeah. not a ticketing system. I mean, yeah, you can use ticketing systems, but it turned out to be a more of a big problem than than a, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as we say, a human word, a live word, moves things so much faster than any yeah. any ticketing system out there. So, but I understand mm. the requirements for a ticketing system. Don't get me wrong. So, but um, so Darko just gave you the official reason for why we call it two pizza teams. The actual reason, which is not official, is that we've got an internal fight where some people want pineapple on the pizza, others don't. So we always need two pizzas. We always need two pizzas. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Yeah, always requiring two pizzas uh, for mm. a team. Yeah, and the reason two pizza team, uh, you know, what does if if anybody has not heard of a term of two pizza teams, is it Ooh. has to be a team that you can feed with two large pizzas. Now, how big are the pizzas? How hungry are the people? We don't know. You know, I can be a two pizza team myself sometimes, right? Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so yep. it, it it really depends, but it's usually a small uh, small team, right? Five to eight people. Let's let's call it that mm -hmm. way. Um, yeah. Um, so Eskel Heisenberg, um, Janan, Janan, hi, he's our AWS hero. Hey, Janan. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Internal. Yeah, yes. We have something. We have in. got an internal one. Yeah, yeah, we've got one. It's called uh, Sim, um, Sim, which we Simple. use for internal tickets, and and it's Simple issue super management. configurable. Yeah. Yeah, and it's called Sim for Simple Issue Management. We love we use it for <laughs> yeah. We we use for everything. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, and and mind you, like uh, one one of the things that's fascinating about Amazon is that I find systems that are here, that have been here since like 1998, and you mm -hmm. see services like things existing since such a long time, and it's and it's it blows my mind away because, you know, and this is something I've been discussing with um, with a few folks um, before. What's your oldest piece of code running in production copies? Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I don't think there's anything older than... Maybe three years, if I have to three. guess now. I don't, I don't think there's anything longer than that anymore. I did have a ex uh, colleague or a friend who's an ex colleague caught him here at some point saying, listen, um, they had trouble uh, working with Chef because there was still an active uh, screen session with my user on a server three years later. Oh, wow. Okay. But, well, but I, I mean, other than that, yeah. I was told not so long ago by my colleagues from a, from one of my former companies that my piece of code still runs in production after 11 years. And I made, and it's actually connected to Microsoft Exchange. I made a little tool that grabs information from Exchange and creates a lovely... Um, it, this was 2009, right? So uh, it creates a lovely HTML website with all the um, meeting rooms uh, displayed, which are when are they occupied, mm -hmm. like a like a timetable when when they're free on that day, and it shows on a big screen in the hallway in the, in, the, in our HQ, and it still runs. <laughs> so he sent me a picture of it, and I remember myself coding it very badly in PowerShell, creating some very very rough HTML. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> but it oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just amazed. Mm. And I had a discussion with Goran. Goran is our um, uh, data hero um, from Serbia. And he has a, a piece of Java code that's been running for 16 years now in production. And it has gone through different versions of Java and whatnot. So um, oh, yeah. it's, it, it has moved quite a bunch. So <laughs> I'm always fascinated to see something like that uh, existing and running. Um, mm. I, mean, I think my oldest one was uh, setting up a wiki. Um, I set that up in a, in a company in 20, 2010 or 2011. Okay. And I remember getting a ping um, six years afterwards saying, someone say, asked me a question about, hey, listen, we found this and we saw some note that you know indicated that you set this up. Um, I, I, what's happening here? How, what can we do with it? I'm like, oh, okay, that's quite nice. So, okay. But I mean, that was just a simple media wiki server. So. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's, it's always fascinating leaving and finding these old things. What I do at some point want to do is I still have some bash scripts that I wrote in 2010 and 11 interacting with root 53 um, to do some funky things with DNS that I, I, I have them stored somewhere that I want to look at and see now that I actually know what I'm doing, because back then I didn't, um, okay. because that's where that was my first interaction with AWS um, to see if they could still work and what they did and what I was trying to do, because 
I remember editing the DHCP config on EC2 hosts as they came up to set different DNS values for them oh, and wow. register themselves elsewhere. And it was, I did some very, very interesting things. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and by interesting, I mean probably not the right way at all, but they worked yeah. because there was a hack bash script. But yeah. I think I did something with my DNS now um, because I got, a, I got an internal ticket now for my DNS. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to check out what did I do. Um, so uh, did all you? of our AWS accounts are internal AWS accounts. I mean, they're normal AWS accounts, but um, they're kind of managed internally. Um, and I got a ticket something that I did something with my DNS with my domain name. Uh -oh. And I'm trying to figure out what I did. Um, Oof. I had that on Wednesday morning. No, Thursday morning. Yesterday morning. I think it was yesterday. My um, domain host zone is misconfigured. Interesting. Ooh. Okay, I'll, I'll have to figure this out. Uh, hmm. Dangling DNS records. Ah. Okay. Um, not sure what that means. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, Dark I, I think I've told you mm -hmm. so this week. Um, so, I was doing some webinars on um, uh, data uh, processing and uh, transformation. So, using uh, Amazon Kinesis, Firehose, okay. uh, AWS, Glue, those kind of things. So, I'd set up a range of cluster. And um, part of it was opening it up to uh, be publicly accessible for some of the parts that I was demoing. Okay. And then the one morning I woke up and I got just like, I happened to check my mail, but like, so I was like, oh crap, I've just called this for the save two ticket because so save uh, one is like major outage. Save yeah. two goes to VP level, which yeah. meant that um, I had to quickly fix and then also quickly explain why did I put expose an internal database publicly. Yeah, we yeah. have a thing when we we are very very conscious about opening things to the world, even if it's like an internal. Like if I create an S3 bucket on AWS on my AWS account, which is man, managed internally, and it's open to the world, somebody's <laughs> going to get paged for it. <laughs> so it's yeah. very important. Yeah. So yeah, the, obviously the process is an automate automated process to actually um, um, put them on a list. That means that they know that there's no um, uh, data in there that we care about. Um, but you also need to know about that. So I knew about the S3 buckets. I didn't know about uh, databases. So uh, I apologize to my manager. Databases, that. yeah, that's a, that's a relatively new thing. Uh, because if I recall correctly, uh, it it's, it wasn't like that before. You can open up a database mm. to the world. So, um, well, not to the world. You can expose it to the mm. to the to the public. Public. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, okay, I just want to have a, have a look at what did I do because uh, I don't want you know people getting paged. Um, so for what did I did? I bought beer the beans. Is this the one? Yeah, is this the name, the domain name? So what did I do wrong here? Um, I have dangling DNS names. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't really know what that means. Um, I'll have to figure it out uh, after this mm. one. So um, maybe paste me the uh, the error on Slack so I can have a look this side because it could be because I've also got a zone to find it for uh, beautiful beans and I'm wondering if there's something to do between the two of them that's not causing some weirdness. Um, so yeah. Um, there's no error. It's basically a, a ticket coming in and say, "Hey, um, okay. um, AWS security has detected that your AWS Route 53 hosted zone is misconfigured in that way that you can enable some attacker to can take control of it." Okay, uh, what's happening? Route 53 assigns four domain name servers DNS to every hosted zone mm -hmm. to handle translating the zone's domain names into IP addresses. In order to activate hosted zone and make sure uh, and make the route zone routable via DNS, the customer must update the parent zone's DNS records. To use at least one and preferably all four DNS servers. Ah, okay, okay. So that 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 uh, rings a bell. So let me quickly double check my config because, like I said, I updated the parent or the the registrar portion of that, but it might be my zone. Maybe you have a DNS zone, yeah. Let's see. Um, let me actually delete this this one just to prevent any potential issues. Delete. Let me put it to yeah. work in progress. So this is this is also for the benefit of everybody else. Uh, we get mm. we get notified if we do something bad, right? Uh, and yeah, uh, you know that's that's how we can tell people uh, from security perspectives what we should care about. So there we go. Yeah, who is an error? Also, Ricardo is asking what's the what's the uh, what's the best error message you have ever seen? Um. Wow. I mean. <laughs> I, I can't remember of any funny ones, but I I always am fascinated by super. Um, if if somebody creates an error that, if you if you're building an application and you say an error has happened, 
and that's it without any information. Like I know the end user doesn't care what's the error ID. That's fine. But you should always put a little string. Hey, this is the error ID. And then based on that error ID, you can actually do some checking on, on, a, on, a, on a knowledge base or something like that. <laughs> Guru meditation is from Stuart. That, that's an Amiga thing. Uh, Amiga um, blue screen of that or actually black screen of that was a Guru meditation. And people still, still use Guru meditation. I think Apache or Nginx, uh, one of those uh, application servers uses Guru meditation as an error message. So mm. and there's a story behind Guru meditation. I'm not sure what it is. So. I'm trying to think now. There's, um, I want to say, this Terraform has got a thing where if you really break it, but this now from given that I used it from 0 0.6, had okay. a thing that it said something like, "If you're reading this message, don't worry, it's not you, it's us. Um, <laughs> something broke internally. Can you please send us the following information? Or something like that." Oh wow! Um, yeah. Okay, the stack still the, still couldn't complete. Um, not uh, okay. So this 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 is the DNS thing. Yeah. It mm. couldn't validate the certificate, right? So it, that's why it yeah. failed. So, um, okay. So that was the problem. And I think it's it's due to the fact that the, this issue happened. So you, Kubus, you deleted your hosted zone, right? Yeah. Okay. So could be most likely due to that. Um, so I'm quickly doing an NS lookup here. Although it seems when I do NS lookup, oh, sorry, not NS lookup, a dig for the name service, it does get the right yeah. configs out. Delete, but so, uh, that's DNS is always the issue. Yeah. I mean, so for, we for, read for that us, last time. For, for like, I have actually three things to, to that, that gave me like, how do I fix it? Delete the hosted zone if it's not needed. Make sure to remove all the hosted zones assigned DNS servers and the parent zones name server record. What's the parent zone in this case? The parent zone is well. This is the parent zone. There is no parent zone. Uh, see, here's the thing. I had a parent zone on my side, which ah. in theory, but it shouldn't know about that zone because it's just a random DNS zone. Got it. Um, but, and I didn't have the registrar pointing at that, but the registrar was still pointing at another set of name servers, which okay. could have been reused somewhere else. So okay. that could have been the issue. So okay. Okay. I think point. we'll have to keep an eye on this and then yeah. okay. promise I, to fix I, it for the next episode properly. Yeah. So um, I may get the, like a the ticket thing resolved. So um, yeah. <laughs> Or how did you end up here? Oh dear, <laughs> so many, so many, um, so many interesting um, uh, error messages. So basically, mm. um, what we did today was not much, right? But we did a big mm. thing in a sense that we have actually introduced some structure to our application, so to our CDK application. So um, we have basically created a split a single stack with all the things to a multiple stacks. Even if this multiple stack setup is very simple, that we have a one stack just for DNS. And when I say DNS, I mean, it just creates a hosted zone in Route 53, mm. nothing else. And um, the second stack creates everything else. Now, as time goes on, we're gonna actually uh, split the second stack as well into, into multiple stacks. So we're gonna have a separate stack for VPC, for example. Uh, we, I would have a separate stack maybe for IM, for permissions. Uh, I would have a stack for the, the ECS portion of it. So multiple stacks would be here, uh, introduce some dependencies on them and do a bunch of imports and exports um, so we can kind of concatenate the data between all of them mm -hmm. um, the best way we can. <laughs> it's all in a single region, so it's gonna be easy. But once we decide to move multi-region, this is where the complications are gonna start. And oh, this yeah. is something but I have to gonna figure out. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, so uh, people have were asking for the GitHub repo. I posted a GitHub repo in chat a while ago. So uh, if you have missed it, let me paste it once more. I mm -hmm. think I have it somewhere here. Um, mind you, the current state of the GitHub repo is just bad. Uh, so uh, there's no good README. There's nothing there. So it's just a two mm -hmm. year, two week old code uh, which we're gonna be updating and yep. adding some more context to it um, for sure. But we will be updating the, the YouTube details in the next week or two of the episodes if you want exactly. to follow what we did previously. Exactly. Um, and hopefully, if I made good notes, I did forget here at the last half for a little bit. So the first half is very well documented. The second half, yeah. not so much. Uh, we will sort that out as well. What? Ooh, interesting. It tries to delete the hosted zone. Oh, don't do that. No, 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 no. Don't delete Ooh. the hosted zone. That's very interesting. Ah, okay. So that's something we have to figure mm. out next time. Let yeah. me have a, I want. I want to see this. So there must be a way. No, 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 no. There must be something. Something here that's not good because I. I want to prevent the deletion of this. I don't want you to create mm. a host. Oh, oh! Thanks for that it suggestion. Did create we'll a new that. hosted zone. Did we delete ah, that? Is the question. It created two hosted. There zones. we go. That's why we didn't that's remove the, the code. That's the problem. 
Ah, well, buddy, no, stop it. Don't do that. I want you to import a hosted zone. So we need to do the import then next time. Okay, so next time, instead of creating a hosted zone, we're going to import a hosted zone. So good. Mm. Um, we found out the problem. Yeah, so, now we know the error. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, this dog of mine. Two seconds. <laughs> Uh, Stuart, we're going to embed the videos on, on, on the readme file. Absolutely. So I, I actually did something similar for, uh, my, um, for my Terraform series, uh, which I basically did something like this. I build a, a readme file like this, where I explain each episode, what mm. we did now. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to remember, or we, we need to go uh, throughout all the episodes and explain mm -hmm. what we did and maybe we can do the kind of things. And there's always a link to a YouTube video. I'm not sure readme yeah. can actually display a video. No, can I don't think no, so. We I can add paste to a screenshot, but yeah, we can do a screenshot and like a link, but we cannot embed the video. But this is how this is something how I would like our uh, our repo to look like. So we you can, can do a link. Cinema. You can yeah, link a we video. Can, we we, we but, might be able to link the YouTube video's thumbnail image because I'm assuming that has got a yeah, obviously a link that we can do. We can embed yeah. that, but we can figure that out. But yeah, we'll figure it out. But we will it's make all it gonna nice. be it's yeah. all gonna be there. Uh, not in this repository. It should be a different one. So. Yeah. Uh, Boon, Boon asks, uh, should be a DDoP in hosted zone? I do see a point to have duplicate names. Uh, yeah, no, I, I made a mistake. So, uh, uh, Boon, I've, I've basically, um, I, I, assu I assumed wrong. So, um, uh, I've here, if you look at the, 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 where is it? So, I create a hosted zone here, but from a lookup. And this is weird because a hosted zone already exists. And what this did is actually recreated a zone. It created another zone, which it should not do that, right? So um, uh, I am basically gonna um, try to fix this by for, because already a zone creates uh, already a zone exists from a different different stack. So I need to fix this and make it so that it just references that zone, but not create it. And the way to do that is actually to introduce a, a, re, a, 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 a import or a reference to an existing resource in the uh, in the app.js file so that is something we're going to be um, doing and I, I didn't know how to do that exactly right now uh, but uh for the next time we'll do that so yeah it's weird I actually don't know everything we also have exactly. to learn the whole time we know yeah. some things yeah if you came here for uh expert knowing everything and doing everything perfectly you're in the wrong place uh <laughs> that's just a matter of unless fact. you mean expert by tell me how many different ways to break things then yes i can say i'm an expert absolutely absolutely and we can expertly talk about how bad things we did and we can expertly talk about where to find documentation mm. <laughs> and potentially how to read it but um and <laughs> one of the things like i can do really expertly i can delete CloudFormation stacks like a pro like Ooh. when they fail i can just click a button delete and start again so yeah like this time it again it delete failed really uh, buddy, you should mm -hmm. have failed. Um, oh, buddy. I'll figure ah, it out. That's fine. <laughs> we will uh, cool. We will be ready for next time. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for I joining. That. Um, next episode, Monday. Monday at the same time. Yes. At the same place. Uh, so, thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you for all the comments and questions. We love having folks mm -hmm. here um, just kind of chatting with you. It's not just about us talking to each other and building some code. It's also about talking to you all. So, mm. uh, it's been a pleasure. And, yeah, I hope we will be seeing you again sometime soon, actually, on Monday. Yes, definitely on Monday. Yeah. I will with be a nice shared account. Nice shared account. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah don't forget to subscribe at the, at the youtube channel mm. as well please thank you ricardo as well yeah um thank you all i will be ending the stream right now bye bye cool bye